We are here in Carlsberg Bien, one of our favorite neighborhoods in Copenhagen, located right between Vesterbro and Fredericksburg. As you can see from the architecture around me, this area has an incredible history. It's actually the former site of Carlsberg Brewery, and most of these buildings were built in the 1800s and used for beer production. This beautiful area was previously closed off to the public, but now that the brewery has moved, they've opened up the neighborhood and revitalized it. Old meets new in Carlsberg Bien, they've kept a lot of the historic buildings and turned them into modern concepts, like Hotel Otilia and the Ira Baston Spa. It's a very active area. People live here, work here, go to school here, and of course eat here. We're gonna take you on a tour of our favorite restaurants in Carlsberg Bien. Luckily, they curate and carefully select only high quality concepts, championing independent artisans and passionate craftsmen. You'll find our favorite burger in Copenhagen at Gasoline Grill, sourdough pizza at Surt, a Japanese omakase and izakaya at Kona, lobster rolls and fish and chips at Hooked, beer and bar food at Carl's, and a new bakery, Cadence. The area won't be completely finished for a couple years, but it's amazing to watch the neighborhood develop. Every time we come back, it feels like a new restaurant has opened. We fell in love with the incredible architecture of this neighborhood the first time we passed through the double gate. Every time we've returned, we've learned something new about the brewery's history and these iconic landmarks. Four massive stone elephants stand guard at the entrance to Carlsberg Bien. These four elephants symbolize founder Carl Jacobson's children. Above them, you can see Carl and his wife Otilia overlooking their brewery from the balcony. On top of the brew house is a sculpture of Thor, the old Norse thunder god. Carl's passion for art and history led him to design this architectural wonder in Copenhagen. Gasoline Grill is located on the large open square in Brigner's Plots. Their cheeseburger is our favorite in Copenhagen. It's made with all organic ingredients. The patty is semi-smashed on the griddle until it's caramelized, topped with organic cheddar, served on their potato bun with pickles, onions, and their tangy gasoline sauce. Don't miss out on their crinkle cut fries. The neighborhood that was once a brewery would be incomplete without a beer bar. Carl's has 20 beers on tap and lots more by the bottle. You can drop in for a beer and a snack if you're looking for a quick bite, or you can try some of the bigger dishes, like their beef tartare, seasonal vegetables, and the signature Brewmaster's Toast. Cadence is a bakery and cafe with Aussie-inspired brunch dishes. Grab loaves of bread, pastries, cookies, and lattes to go. Or you can sit down for reinvented brunch classics like sweet potato hotcakes. The popular fish eatery Hooked also has a location in Carlsberg Bien. The menu features fish and chips, lobster rolls, mac and cheese balls, and shrimp tempura. Today we're having dinner at restaurant Surt. It's located right next to the elephants. In fact, the address is Bag Elefanterna, which translates to behind the elephants. Pizza Yolo Giuseppe Oliva helped Christian Puglisi open Based in 2013, where he was part of developing the pizza recipe. Then in 2019, he decided to branch out on his own and open his own restaurant. My name is uh, Giuseppe Oliva, and this is uh, Rissan Swift. My father is a baker. Uh, he have a baker in Italy. I grew up uh, helping my father at the bakery. But Surt uh, in the Scandinavian mythology is a god. It's a god of fire. Surt, uh, I think it's also a perfect name because uh, we make sourdough pizza. So from suadai, sourdough. The dough, it's uh, made uh, with uh, five different uh, uh, varieties of flour from a small meal in Sicily and they ferment for about 30, 34 hours. The core of uh, Sword, of course, is uh, our wood fire oven and crafted, uh, covered with uh, those nice styles from Italy. 
uh, where we bake uh, our pizza for about a minute at 500 degrees. For lunch, he also serves a sir pie. The dough is fermented twice as long, almost 70 hours, so it has a more distinct sour flavor and it's thicker because it's baked in a pan right on top of the burning embers in the fire. So it's really hot in there. It's cooked in this pan and it gets like thick like a pie. Casper Dune. Uh, it's a new neighborhood, but in fact, it's uh, one of the oldest here in Copenhagen. And uh, here, they've been fermenting beer for a long time. And I, I felt connected already. I love fermentation, and uh, I also like the job they do uh, with uh, this new building uh, in harmony with the whole building. And then, uh, I don't know, this space has a uh, very nice light with a lot of window and I need that. <laughs> We have uh, six pizzas on the menu, three classic and three that we change according to the Danish season. Uh, the three classic are the marinara, uh, margarita and the anata. Sirt has a signature style of pizza. It's really unique. We've never seen anything like it. The crust is extremely thin on the bottom, but still fluffy and bouncy on the side. It has a great structure and a great flavor. Last year, we, together with the Jakobsen, we did a collaboration where we decided to have a beer fermented uh, with my sour dough. A result of a wheat beer with a very thick foam, creamy foam, and a little bit of sour and a little bit almond taste at the hand, I think. That I think goes also well with the pizza, uh, to be honest. We open end of 2019, uh, before Christmas, soft opening, and the area was uh, just start to growing. I think I was one of the first together with the gasoline. Um, and uh, since then I can see like that they're building fast and people move here fast. So I can see the change and uh, the area that is growing, even though it's not done. Uh, and also I can see that uh, a lot of people start to be attracted uh, from this area. Hotel Otilia was named after Carl's wife, Otilia Jacobson. The facade is lined with golden mosaic discs that resemble the bottom of a beer bottle. On the opposite side of the building are charming circular windows overlooking Bruggenerd's Platz and Gasoline Grill. It's hard to believe that these hotel rooms used to store beer back in the day. The lobby is located inside the clock tower and has a chic industrial vibe with Scandinavian furniture and artistic light fixtures. The rooftop is a great place to enjoy sunset. Time stops at Ira the high-end spa chain and ancient bathhouse. This relaxing oasis is the perfect escape from busy city life. The cavernous underground spa is illuminated by candlelight and filled with thermal baths of varying temperatures, from ice cold to body temperature to boiling hot. Recharge in the steam room and float in the salt bath. End your Ira experience with a massage or their signature couple's wine bath. Today we're checking out Kona, a new Japanese restaurant from the guys behind Slurp Ramen. We're going to start upstairs in the izakaya for some pork katsu sandos and chicken karagi. And then we're going to move downstairs for the omakase tasting menu. My name is Philippine Reitzer and this is restaurant Kona. Kona means corner in Japanese. The idea was very simple. Corner is always where things happen. You meet at the corner, um, you explain things by corners. I'm from Austria, I'm 
worked in fine dining for some time, came originally for Noma, ended up working there for a while, and then at Relay. Also spent some time in Japan to work in a kaiseki and in different ramen shops. Came back to Denmark, opened up Slurp Ramen John about four years now, and uh, now opened up Kona last year, and here we are. Um, so the food in the two different spaces are as following. The Itzekai, what we do is said, like it's small dishes, dishes to share. Our uh, signature dishes are probably like the sandals, so translated sandwiches, where you have either way a pork cutlet that has been fried uh, and then dressed with tonkatsu sauce and cabbage. And then we have chicken korage, which is also like a Japanese staple you really find in any Itzekaya. And that is deep fried chicken with a dip of some sort and some herbs and lemon. We're super lucky in that we have our own in-house kimchi queen, aka Kayla Kimchi. And she supplies us with some of the greatest kimchi. And she also makes this pretty dope kimchi sandwich. So it's milk bread, kimchi, cheese, butter, and small milk bread, toast it, slice it, and just you know eat it as a snack or as a whole dinner. And send the food downstairs in Omakase is the idea was quite simple that we said, okay, how do we take some of the great vegetables that we have here and some of the great seafoods and how do we just make it as simple as possible, like with this Japanese aesthetic as well, which is like two free components, they all kind of complement each other and just make sense. So we highlight the product. And the food now obviously it's led by incredible chef Jessica. We started at the same time about seven years at Noma. She ended up staying, worked there for five years, then worked two years at Inua, and now came back to Denmark. And uh, yeah, it's just kicking ass down here in the Omakase. I'm from Austria. Let's be honest, I mean, some of the greatest wines are Austrians. So I was like, all right, there's a huge variety. We want to keep it simple, so we're going to start out with one country, and right now it's Austria. So we only have Austrian natural wines, and then. Um, a couple of special cocktails, we wanted to focus on just like the classic apples you would get it in Japan, but then we thought, all right, let's give it a bit of a twist. We add some lemon uh, yuzu juice, which everybody loves, and then we have the three, uh, three different varieties, one with the empirical, the tiger blend, so which is like the basic blend for most of the other spirits, one with uh, Nika whiskey, and then one with shochu, and then you can decide. And so we really want to be the space where no matter where you are or what you do, you can always drop by and know there's some warm plate of food for you and like a glass of something. And that there's a sense of like, okay, there's always a certain, not party vibe, but just a cool, chill vibe where you can always hang out. What brought me initially to Casper Gun was the fact that like there's such a deep um, cultural background and then at the same time they have all this like high-rising, new buildings, new apartment buildings. And I think they did a very good job of like combining the two. So what brought me to Casper Gun really was just the, I saw the potential, I really enjoyed the area and I think long term it will be a place where people think of food, Casper Gun. If you like our work, support us on Patreon, where we also have a food community called The Hungries. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more food and travel videos. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at Andershusa and Carnivore. Thanks for watching!